Just get the map out, please, Tracy. I've got the map. You know I can't read maps. Now. Oh. True Victoria? Where are you? Um. Wodonga. Right. Alistair Purbrick, fourth generation family member of the original Shadow Tabel. Thank you for taking the time to walk us around your property today. Yeah, my pleasure. Do you just love it as much as we do? Well, uh, there's a lot to love. <laughs> yeah, there is. How, it's a huge uh, property. How big is it? It's about 3,000 acres. Oh, wow. Yeah. And about 1,000 acres of it is natural wetlands and wildlife reserve, uh, which we've uh, been lovingly restoring for the last 20 years or so. Mm. OK, so we know that you were raised here. Amongst the wine, you're a vigneron, you grow lots of grapes here. What's the most popular wine? Oh, that's a very good question. Our biggest selling wine uh, is a white wine. Mm -hmm. It's a variety called Marsan. It's a cross between an unoaked Chardonnay yes. and a Riesling. As a young wine, it's got lots of sort of tropical fruits and citrus and lime and lemon flavours. Yeah, well, we're really lucky with the Intolerant Cooks to be able to be here and look at your gorgeous winery and use your beautiful wine in our cooking. Mm, thank you. Well, tell me a little bit about the Intolerant Cooks. It's, it's a show for people who love to eat, love to cook, but they may have um, issues with food. They may have uh, lactose intolerance or uh, wheat intolerance. Lots of people have lots of different food issues. So we aim to create food that's really easy to make, that's fun. It's more about what we can eat rather than what we can't eat. Richard? Yes? I have eight words for you. What? Slow cooked chicken with green olives and pancetta. We've got something special to go in that chicken dish. We're going to put on some beautiful Chateau to Bilk Massan. Yeah, this is a really popular wine here. Yeah. So, let's get started. There's finely chopped carrot. Onion and celery. You're going to start with that. I'm going to start with these. Yeah, why don't you chop up the pancetta? This is a mm. gluten-free one which is really special mm. because for many of us, we haven't been able to eat these things for a long time. Right, I'm going to add things as you stir. Yeah. How's that? And what I've done here is I've just smashed two cloves of garlic. I've got a pinch of salt and I've just sort of squashed them roughly with the back of a knife. So that goes in. So I know some people do like these and I know some people don't like anchovies. You love them. And I love them. I either like to put them in the pan yep. and smash them up with a wooden spoon or chop them into pieces, because I know yeah. that you want to throw them in whole. They melt. You won't even know they're there. So, okay. would you like to chop up this chicken? Yep. This is something I don't yeah. know how to do, so do you want right. to teach me? All right, you can feel the bone along here, and you slice through there, and then you slowly just cut through. Yeah. And then again, you've got another bone just here. You've got to actually lift the chicken up on one side, and you can actually hear that, that oh, break, which wow. is not the best sound in the world, but... It's what you've got to do. So you can find the knife through there, and then you have two bits of chicken. OK, while mm -hmm. you're doing that, mm -hmm. I'm going to take out some of these fantastic Melrose organic olives, and they're, they're just beautiful. I love them. OK, so I want to measure out my olives because I tend to be a bit clumsy, and um, if I was just going to put these straight into the dish, I would... Um, I want to you. I'd probably just um, drop them. And so... <laughs> God, oh. I didn't mean to hurt you. <laughs> sorry, I just turned into a matron with a cold spoon then, didn't no, I? I OK. Oh, sorry. <laughs> OK, now, Richard, would you right. please hold that for me? Yep. And then I would just want to put this in the bottom. So this is the mirempoix. Right. OK. Here we are. So um, will you please put the chicken on top of that? Then we can put the, the olives in, yeah? Do we want to deglaze? Yes, we do want to deglaze. Okay. That's gorgeous. So we're getting all the remainder of all the mirempoix. Putting in some fresh oregano. You can put yours in there. I'm yep. sticking mine in the deglaze. Okay, cool. And let's throw these olives on. Yep. Richard, can you grab those veggies, please? Yep. Okay. Now, see, some people would put the passata and the deglaze in separately. I'm not going to do that. I want it to be all mixed up so that you've got that beautiful right. sauce and flavours going all the way through it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so put that on like that. I mean, this is just the perfect thing to have in this cold weather. 
It's just beautiful, isn't it? Really comforting. Okay, so we're ready to go in the oven. Bit of foil on the top. All right. How long? About 30, 35 minutes. 180 degrees again? Yeah. Fantastic. All right. All right. Let's tear that off. And... So why don't we leave that cooking mm -hmm. and we'll go and find Alistair from Shout Out to Bilk, who's fourth generation vineyard and then we can come back and have some lunch. Good. Yeah? Good eye. Okay. Come on. Come on. Good yeah, girl. Yeah, good girl. Yay! Oh, Yay. puppy! So, come on, is this fixed? Oh. Is this ready to go? It's ready. Is it fixed? There's nothing broken about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's ready to come out of the oven. Okay. Let's right. have a look. Okay. It's very handy to love it, isn't it? Okay. Oh, that looks beautiful. Really Look gorgeous. Yeah, lovely. Mm. You can see that all the flavours have met each other and it's going to really, really taste great. What a lovely thing. We can... Yeah. Yeah, it'd be a beautiful thing to eat outside in the vines. Mm. Oh, Richard. Look how beautiful this is. It's beautiful, Richard, but you've taken the wrong turn. How do you know? <laughs> how do I know? Because we are just... We're just totally lost. What are we going to do? I'll look at the map. Richard. Hi, Richard. Hello. So, Di, you're the, the rhubarb guru. What is it that you can tell us that makes rhubarb so fantastic? Richard and Trace, do you realise that rhubarb is very low in fructose, so you two can probably enjoy it? That's fantastic. There's a lot of people that are intolerant these days, mm. and this is one of the things that, that they, they can, can eat. eat. Yeah. yeah. We'd like to learn how you cook your rhubarb, because well, I've always done it with, um, with, with water and sugar. And I've always uh, done it with orange juice also. Look, I just sit down with a little bit of rhubarb I've just poached lightly mm. with my little bit of raw sugar. So you Indian don't put too much it. water in it when you first no, cook? No, no water. water. Oh, no. no water. No, no, that's why I'm saying I'm an intolerant farmer. <laughs> <laughs> You're not to put uh, any water in it and oh. raw sugar because you've got that beautiful organic and earthy flavour yeah. and I don't want you to kill that. So I hope you enjoy it. We're going to cook some later. Oh, yes. We will be cooking something fantastic yeah. with it. Uh -huh. I'll be there to judge it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe if if we let you try our cake, um, mm -hmm. maybe Di yeah. could let us try some of yours. Cake, maybe. And then, and then oh, we'll, there's we'll there's judge. There's one there for you to try. Yeah, we'll yeah. judge harshly. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you'll like it, so uh, I'm not worried. I'm sure. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Richard, yes. how gorgeous was Di from Di's Rhubarb Farm? Beautiful woman. Absolutely wonderful. We've learnt about rhubarb, we've learnt how to cook it. So what we're going to do today yep. is we're going to cook a gluten-free rhubarb torta. 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 Yeah, torta. You yeah. can say torta. I, say I just torta. want to be a bit affected. All right. Yeah. So we've got Liddell's yes. beautiful lactose-free milk. And beautiful Liddell's lactose-free cream. And we're going to make our own and ricotta. ricotta. Now, this is really exciting because I've never made ricotta and I've always purchased it from a deli or a supermarket. But Richard's taught me how to make it myself. It's really, really, really simple. Come on, let's Even do it. Even I'm surprised. Yeah. I, well, All right, so let's grab the milk. And uh, we'll pop this into... The whole litre goes into this. Yeah. So I'm going to grab the Liddell's lactose-free cream. Yeah. When that's heated up to that point just before it boils a bit, we add the acid elements, which are lemon and Melrose apple, apple cider, cider vinegar. vinegar. And we're going to stir that in. OK. OK. Are we ready? Yeah. All right. So just stir, stir, and then tap, That's tap. It. And then magically, it starts to sure. lift and separate yep. like an old bra. It's amazing. And then we're going to tip it through this muslin cloth. You've got to allow the curds and the whey to separate, so that's probably going to take about five minutes yeah, while so we prepare the dry ingredients. Okay. So we've got some gluten-free flour. A cup of gluten-free flour. Mm -hmm. Almond meal. So we're going to tip that into yeah. the gluten-free flour. Mm -hmm. right. So we've got a teaspoon of cinnamon. And, and with your spices, if you can get them fresh, um, 
Cinnamon's tricky to get fresh because you've got to grind it yourself. Yeah. It's enormous. It's the only way to do it. Yeah, but with nutmeg, you just need a grater. And um, that's about a quarter of a teaspoon. And the last thing we add is about a pinch of salt. Wow, that was the biggest pinch of salt I've ever seen. I've got very big hands. Yeah, have you? Yeah. Show me, measure. Oh my God, a gigantor. Okay, let's move yeah. on from that. Because yeah. um, you know what they say about men with big hands and big feet? What? They wear big gloves and big shoes. Mm. <laughs> so we're mixing all that together the nutmeg and the cinnamon. Oh, it's just so you beautiful. mix that and we'll start on our wet ingredients. Okay. We've got three eggs. So while you're doing that, I'll probably start with my egg whites. So I'm going to use a quarter of a cup of apple juice concentrate and a quarter of a cup of Liddell's milk. Okay, the lactose milk. And I'm going to combine that with a scraped okay. vanilla bean. All right. So while you're doing that, I'm going to just whiz up these egg whites. Okay. This is a beautiful vanilla bean, which I'm going to add to the eggs. But when you're actually mixing up your egg whites, you want them to be quite stiff with little peaks on them, like little mountains. Yeah. You can see those peaks forming. That's yeah. nearly done, Trace. Yeah. And you should be able to just hold the bowl upside okay. down. And we always pray that they stay up there. Right. Yeah. So to our egg mixture, I'm now going to add the apple juice concentrate and the Liddell's milk. OK. So, um... We're going to add the wet ingredients to the dry ingredients now. So we'll pop that in. See, here's the thing. It always says make a little well. I've made the little well. It makes no difference. I just chuck it in. Seriously. Right, that's our mixture coming together there. What's going to happen next is we're going to add our ricotta. OK, yep. gorgeous. So just tip that in. Yep. Well, pop, pop, pop it, it in. in. OK, wow, how exciting. So you can just sort of break that up just a little bit as you do that. You don't want to, like, break them up into the smallest of pieces because I still want to be able to see some large bits of ricotta, but you also want to make sure that everything is combined together. So I think that's nearly done, Trace. Yep, so with the egg whites, the whole idea is to be really gentle because we want to keep that air in the cake. So if you can very gently fold that in, please, Richard. OK. Our torte is nearly complete. A torta. Bellissima. Bellissima. Ricardo. OK, so now we're ready to put it all together. Fantastic. So we'll tip it in this fabulous... Can you hold that? ...cake tin that we've already prepared. So we've used coconut oil to grease that. You can use butter or ghee. It just makes it easier to get the cake out. Right. OK? So we just want to spread that around. OK, so now we're going to put some of Di's rhubarb on that she picked mm. for us. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm actually going to lay this rhubarb out in a bit of a starburst pattern, which I know is a little bit retro, but it also creates a lovely, lovely circle, which is going to catch all our sugar and everything. When it bakes up, it's going to bake the most beautiful top. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to bake the cake for about 20, 25 minutes at a heat of about 180. You can't fail with 180. Let's get this in. In we go. Oh, I'm so excited. I really right. can't wait to try it. I hope Di comes back for our cake. I hope she doesn't. I'm going to eat all of it. <laughs> She's got her own cake. Come on, Richard. All right. It looks so gorgeous. Careful. Hot, hot, hot. Hot. Oh, lovely. Look at this. Look at that. That's just fantastic. Now, you wanted to sort of pretty it up a little bit. I do want to pretty it up. Yeah. I'm just going to brush a little bit of Melrose apple juice concentrate yeah. over it this just is... to make it look really beautiful. Yeah, this is 100% organic apple juice concentrate. All right. OK, so what we're going to do is serve it. And head out into this beautiful Chateau de Ville vineyard. And nom, and, nom, nom! And enjoy our rhubarb autumn torta. Yeah, fantastic. That's pretty damn sexy. Yeah, look it? at that. Yeah. Chateau to Bill. <laughs> <laughs> How fantastic was Nagambi? Beautiful. I've got to tell you, hello, Di. We just loved your rhubarb. I learned how to cook rhubarb properly. Y you did. Mm. We've all been putting too much sugar in it. And all been putting too much liquid in it. Yes. So we've got some fantastic Otway pork here today. Which we're going to turn into a slow-cooked pork curry yes. with pork crackling. So what do you want to start first? I want to start taking the skin away from the meat. Just grab that in there. And you can slowly pull it back, like so, and then do that. See, I've never cooked roast pork because I haven't had enough experience with it. It wasn't something that we had a lot in our house. And my parents were English, so we would have like really badly cooked, um, sorry, Mum, lovely, beautifully cooked chops. 
with all the rubbery fat on them. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's fantastic. It's fantastic. Yeah. So I'm going to keep this to create our pork crackling. Okay. Okay, so I just want to split this pork up, Trace. Okay, you're just going to cut it into chunks? I'm just going to cut it into big chunks. So I'm going to make a Super 7 sauce. I have no idea why it's called Super 7. Do you? I do. Go on then. Because when I originally thought of it, it was just seven or something. As long as it's the same amount. Oh, okay. So this is 100 mils. Mm. Ah, got so it. So it's 100 mil of... 100 mils of water. Yeah. Okay. And then I've got 100 mils of fish sauce. Yes. Lime juice, 100 mils. Mm. Okay. And we've got coconut sugar. And this is 100 grams. Yeah. Okay. Two more ingredients. One I'm scared of, so I'll just get them carefully. It's like a biohazard, okay? <laughs> I've had incidences, okay? So mm -hmm. please, All pass right. me my gloves. Now, I know it looks a little bit hospital -y. I wonder how they do this on daytime hospital. <laughs> no. Yeah, like okay. that. Okay, nurse, scrubs. Thank you. Yeah. Now ready for my chilli. Now, these came out of the freezer. Mm -hmm. We might want to explain that. Okay, the reason why I put them in the freezer trays mm -hmm. is so when you're actually smashing them and bashing them, yes. it seems to be a lot easier to actually get the garlic and the chilli melded together. Yep. The other thing too is... Is this a great place to store them? Yeah. Now, this is unorthodox. This is how I smash garlic. <coughs> because I enjoy it. Okay? <laughs> okay, I'm going to add some turmeric, coriander root, garlic. Yes. Yes. Oh, seriously, nearly got chilli in the eyeball. Cooking can be a health hazard. Dangerous. Dangerous. Okay. Right. I think it's done. I think it's done too. That looks good. Okay, Trace, can you pick up the coconut for me? Yes. Straight in there? Straight in there. Okay. Beautiful. All right, mix that all together, Trace, because this is going to be like a little spice rub. You look like a doctor with something really wrong with you. <laughs> Yeah, it's not great, but it's there for a reason. Okay. So I'm going to put all the spiced rub okay. now over there. Yes. I'm, okay, I'm interested, but I've got mm. stuff to do. I'm a busy mm. woman. Okay. Okay. There we are. I've what got a toy to play with. All you've got to do is that, Trace. Okay. All right, just put that in big pieces, in big chunks. It's going to cook for three hours, I suppose. I think it needs to cook for four hours, Rich. Okay. So I'm going to put some pineapple on it, Trace. Okay, I'm going to start playing with my new toy. All right, and look, I like to use coconut water in this, not coconut milk. Coconut water, beautiful flavour. Not, so, not so rich as coconut milk. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to put this in the oven, but I've forgotten. How long, how long did we put it in there for, Trace? Four hours. Four hours. Yeah. Okay. Four hours. Four hours. Four hours. Meanwhile, I'm making a dog's breakfast of this cold store, but it's going to be great. A little bit of paper over the top to keep the steam in. And then... And then... Foil on top. Foil on top. Do you want me to hold one in? No, clearly no, not. Clearly All right. not. I'll get back to doing my coleslaw. So, herbs, mint and chives. Would you like to chop those up, okay. please? You can, you can finish that. I will. So we've got coriander here. And you don't have to use the whole thing, but um, using fresh herbs just makes something ordinary into something really extraordinary. Mm. Now, can I have those chives? Yep. Please? So I like to leave them in long lengths, Trace. Oh. I don't. They get stuck in my teeth. I've got to pull no, but them then out. You can, then, you, then you've got lots of language in there. Language. Yeah. Language. Food is language. Is it's it? another language. Right. Oh. Do you want to give that a lot, quick little toss? I'm sure you can toss it. There we are. I'm sure you're really good at that. And we're going to cover that with some cling wrap. All right. While you're doing that, I'm going to attend to the poor crackling. OK. So I'm just going to rub a little bit of oil on top of it. Yep. Just so you can get your salt to stick. Like so. Mm-hmm. And then a little bit of salt. Actually, a lot of salt. There's enough salt on there. My aortas are already screaming. Well, that's all right. I'm worried. I'm not worried because I actually have a low salt diet, so I can oh. have salt when oh. I want to. It's all about you, isn't it, Richard? Well, if you... Have... go. Stick right. it in. Stick it in. Mm. So that'll be about three and a half hours, Tracy. It'll be four. I know that for a fact. Oh, this is the big and reveal. You're going to take the foil off. I'm going to take the foil off. And leave I'm going to add a little bit of our Super 7 dressing. Ooh. Ooh, look at that pineapple. That looks beautiful. Oh, wow. Oh, That's be exactly what it's supposed to do, fall apart. Now, you might be wondering why we're not splashing this all over the top, but because of the high sugar content, leave some for me for my slaw if you don't mind. Mm. We put it down the side, so because if we put it on the top, it would burn and that would ruin it. So much it. sugar, it just turns black. Yeah. All right. Okay, so back in the oven, but with the foil off. Off for about 15 minutes. Okay, and now we can finish our slaw. Okay, so can you put maybe five or six spoons on there, please, Richard? 
little big bits of chilli there. Great. Mm. I'll just give that a little work that through. So all those mint and all that chive and all that coriander in the apple is going to sit so well with our slow-cooked pork yep. and pineapple curry. And then they'll have a little party on the plate and they'll speak the same language. She's taking it. She's taking it. I am it. taking it, yeah. So what I think we could do now, we go sit at the table. Right. OK? Mm. Gorgeous. Good o. Go trace. Oh yeah, that's pretty gorgeous. How beautiful does that look? Yeah, wonderful. And oh, well done. Okay. All right, let's plate it up. Ooh, look at that. Yeah. That's beautiful. It is lovely. Which piece do you want, Tracy? I don't mind. It all looks gorgeous. Okay, that's beautiful. So you've got your beautiful slow cooked pork with pineapple and a fresh herb coleslaw with Super 7 dressing. So I'll pop some of that in here. And the beautiful crackling? Yeah, go on. OK. See, that's all you want. I it's... really want to eat this now. This is beautiful, and I know, because I cooked it for my yeah. sister, and she said it was the best pork she ever tasted. And you cooked it for me, and yeah. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I just want to eat it, Richard. Okay. Seriously, it looks pretty right. good. Okay, we're eating. Don't you use knives in your house? No. Really? Actually, no. Really? No. OK, fine. 